Have you ever wondered what's inside the mind of a mad king? What if you had to follow orders from one? Would you? Ares II Targaryen, the Mad King, was pleasant until he wasn't. Cruelty and horror are all that is left of his legacy. Ironically, before he was known as the Mad King, he was recognized as a charming, handsome, and eloquent ruler. So what exactly drove Ares to madness? And what did he do that forever changed the course of Westeros? Today in Fantasy Archive, we'll uncover the gripping tale of how this once charming king transformed into a brutal and fearsome ruler. We'll uncover the driving force behind his descent into madness with the haunting phrase, Burn them all! Without further hesitation, let's explore into the mind of a mad king. Ares II Targaryen was the 17th ruler to sit on the Iron Throne and he was the very last member of the Targaryen dynasty to hold that position. He ruled from 262 AC to 283 AC. After this time as king, he became widely known as the Mad King. He often cut himself on the blades of the Iron Throne. His arms and legs were always covered with scabs and half-heeled cuts, earning his first nickname, King Scab. In the Game of Thrones series, we are given glimpses of his past through flashbacks that show what it was like when Ares was in charge. A lot of us eagerly anticipate the chance to witness more than mere glimpses of Ares the Second Targaryen's reign. So today let's journey back in time to where it all began, to the year 244 AC when Ares was born in King's Landing. Ares came into the realm as the child of Prince Jahiris, who was the second son of King Aegon V and his own sister wife, Princess Shira. While Ares was still in his teenage years, he found himself married to his sister Rayla, following the peculiar family tradition of keeping things within the bloodline. Early on, Ares formed a close bond with Tywin Lannister, the upcoming heir to Casterly Rock, who served as a page in the royal court. Ares also became inseparable from his cousin Stefan Baratheon, who was next in line for Storm's End. These three were like peas in a pod, always together and up to mischief. In the year 259 AC, Ares' wife Rayla gave birth to their firstborn son and heir, Prince Rhaegar. Sadly, this joyous occasion coincided with the tragic fire known as the Summer Hall Tragedy. The calamity claimed the lives of King Aegon V, his eldest son, Prince Duncan, and numerous others. Ares' father, Jaehaerys, took the Iron Throne following this heartbreaking event. Rumor has it that on the night of Jaehaerys' coronation, Ares had a romantic encounter with Lady Joanna Lannister, stealing her heart away amidst the jubilant festivities. In the year 262 AC, tragedy struck again when King Jaehaerys II succumbed to illness. Ares was subsequently crowned as King Ares II Targaryen, taking up the mantle of leadership. Ares had always been quite the charmer. He had a magnetic personality that drew people in with his generosity, determination, and lofty ambitions. During the early years of his reign, he was the life of the party, reveling in music, dancing, and extravagant masked balls. And let's not forget his fondness for the company of young women, which seemed to be a recurring theme in his life. During his rule, there was no denying that the kingdom thrived under the guidance of Tywin Lannister, the Hand of the King. His brilliant ideas and impressive infrastructure projects made many people believe he was the true leader, overshadowing Ares. This ignited jealousy in Ares and strained their friendship. Over time, the king and Tywin grew distant, and matters had worsened when the Lord of Castler Rock married Lady Joanna Lannister, rumored to have a connection with Ares. With a growing divide between Ares and Tywin, the king began to oppose his friend's counsel at every turn. He made terrible decisions and blamed them on his hand, then applying restorative measures under his own name, gaining popularity for himself, but scorn for Tywin. He would punish anyone who thought Tywin was the real decision-maker of the realm, and anyone who would make a fool of Tywin would be in his good graces. We can say one of the seeds of his madness was envy. The king's attitude changed slightly with the birth of another son in 274 AC. He named him Jaehaerys. 
Jairus' birth almost restored the king to his young, charming self. This changed when Jairus died later the same year. Another seed to his madness was mistrust. He blamed innocent people, tortured and killed many, the wet nurse, his lover and her family. In 276 AC, he had another son named Viserys. He was so obsessed, he had the king's guard look over him. He would trust no one, not even Rayla, to be alone with the baby. When Dennis Darklin, the lord of a humble city called Duskendale, sought autonomy from King's Landing, Tywin rejected the proposal. By then it was no secret that Ares and Tywin's friendship was on a rocky road. Ares had rejected Tywin's marriage proposal of his daughter and Prince Rhaegar. So the cunning Dennis Darklin directly approached the king for assistance. Stay with us, because this is when things take a turn. To assert his independence from Tywin, the king informed Grand Meister Pycelle and the small council of his intention to visit Duskendale. However, he ended up getting arrested and his guards were killed. Tywin set up a siege, but Aerys remained a prisoner for six long months until Sir Barristan ventured to the castle and rescued him. Lord Darklin was executed, and houses Darklin and Hollard were wiped out, but not but without being tortured at excruciating length before burning them alive. Dennis Darklin's wife, who Arius believed was behind his captivity, suffered a horrific punishment. Her tongue and private parts were torn before she was burned alive. These methods made many uncomfortable, to the point that Sir Barristan doubted that maybe the alternative to saving the king would have been preferable. By this time, it was evident to everyone that Ares had changed. The madness doesn't end here. The king's fascination with fire grew. He developed an increasing addiction to wildfire, reaching a point where the sight of someone burning alive aroused him. Ares descended into madness after the defiance, becoming convinced that his own son Rhaegar and Tywin were plotting his demise. Ares asked his childhood buddy, Lord Stefan Baratheon, to find the perfect match for Rhaegar. But things took a tragic turn when Stefan's ship went down near Storm's End. Ares, being the paranoid fellow he was, immediately pointed fingers at Tywin and started fearing for his own life. From that point on, Ares insisted on only meeting with Tywin when the entire Kingsguard crew was present. His madness was based on envy, mistrust, and paranoia. When Ares agreed to appoint Jaime Lannister as a member of the King's Guard, Tywin was furious and resigned as a Hand of the King. With Tywin gone, Ares turned to his son Rhaegar. As tensions mounted between the Crown Prince and his father, the fear of civil war spread throughout the royal court. Though Rhaegar showed great promise, his actions at the Tournay of Harrenhal changed the course of history. After emerging victorious, he shocked everyone by crowning Lyanna Stark as his queen of love and beauty, instead of his wife. Their sudden disappearance fueled rumors of a kidnapping, leading Lyanna's brother Brandon Stark to confront Prince Rhaegar and demand justice. However, instead of receiving answers, Brandon found himself arrested on a charges of conspiracy. When their father, Lord Ricard Stark, sought to defend his son through a trial by combat, the Mad King Aerys chose a horrific champion, fire itself. Lord Ricard was burned alive and Brandon met a tragic end as well. These brutal acts ignited the flames of rebellion, with Lord John Arryn refusing to send the heads of Lord Eddard Stark and Robert Baratheon as demanded by King Aerys. Thus, the rebellion against the Iron Throne was born. Aerys made decisions that didn't turn out in his favor. He was losing. Amidst the chaos, Aerys summoned Jaime Lannister and Lord Rosart, instructing Jaime to kill his own father and ordered Rosart to ignite the hidden caches of wildfire. Recognizing the madness and impending destruction, Jaime made a fateful choice. He slew Lord Rosart and ultimately ended the reign of King Aerys, forever altering the fate of the Seven Kingdoms.